going to let me see my kids, but I'm not going to send you no money. Ah, welcome to CP Time, the only show that's for the culture. Today, we will be discussing black animators. We're in a golden age of black animation right now, with animators such as Aaron Magruder of the Boondocks, or Peter Ramsey, who won an Oscar for that movie about that teenage black boy that was Spider-Man. I'll tell you what, if I had jumping powers, I wouldn't be doing no favors around the neighborhood solving murders for free. I'd be making millions in the NBA. Shoot a three-point on me if you won't, Steph Curry. I'll snatch it out the air. <laughs> Turnover. But before those animators, there were pioneers who led the way in animation. Black pioneers like Zelda Jackie Orms. She created four comic strips, the most iconic being Patty, Joe, and Ginger, which starred two black sisters. They were the Venus and Serena Williams of their time, except for not playing tennis and not being real. So I suppose they were nothing like Venus and Serena. But aside from that, they were. This cartoon was so popular, it led to the creation of the first African-American doll based on a comic character. And it was the only doll with a face that said, I know these white girls are about to touch my hair. The next black animator we want to celebrate is Floyd Norman. He was hired by Walt Disney Studios after only two years in art school. And he worked on Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians, The Sword and the Stone, and Mary Poppins. Basically, if your mother ever bought you one of those fancy Disney VHS tapes, odds are Floyd Norman drew it. And you'd think he was busy enough working on those movies, but no. Floyd was also finding time to post gag drawings all over the Walt Disney campus. These drawings poked fun at company executives. When Walt Disney himself saw them, he was so impressed that he handpicked Norman to work on the Jungle Book. You know how good you got to be at your job where roasting your boss gets you a promotion. It usually only happens on Wild and Out. Norman left Disney to co-create the company Vignette Films, which is where he made his biggest contribution to the culture, creating the original opening credits for Soul Train. It looks like if Thomas the Tank Engine did acid and had a couple shots of Hennessy. Finally, we must mention Bruce W. Smith, who directed the 1992 cult classic, Bebe's Kids. Wait a minute. This guy looks familiar. Can I, I stole my look. I have to talk to my lawyers about that. Anyway, Smith was instrumental in animating movies like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Tarzan, a goofy movie. And not only did he create The Proud Family, which was Disney's first animated show with a black female lead, he was also a supervising animator on Disney's The Princess and the Frog which featured the studio's first black princess. And yes, I know she was immediately turned into a frog, but it was still a better royal experience than the one Meghan Markle had. His crowning moment was co-directing the movie Hair Love. And I'm very happy that this story got told because it introduced America to every black father's worst nightmare, having to style your daughter's hair. One time I tried, I messed up my daughter's hair so bad, she got a restraining order against me. I'm legally not allowed within 50 feet of her edges at all times. So there you have it. Some of history's most inspiring black animators. In fact, it inspired me so much that I commissioned a group of top animators to turn me into my unique animated form. Let's see how they did. <gasps> I knew it. I knew the guy from Bebe's Kid stole my look. Or did I steal his look? Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Roy Wood Jr., and this has been CP Time. And remember, we're for the culture. No, but seriously, am I a rip-off of the guy from Bebe's Kids? Be honest with me. Do I look like Robin Harris?